as you may have noticed, I look a little different than in the thumbnail, and that is because I scrapped all the footage I had filmed previously because I didn't really like it. So we're just going to do this video as a sit-down wrap-up video, and I hope that's cool with y'all. Hey, what's up? My name is Jess. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be revisiting a video I filmed a few months back called my 5 star predictions video which listed 5 books that I thought would be 5 stars once I got around to reading them. I have finally gotten around to reading all 5 of these books so today we are going to find out together whether they were 5 stars or not. So the first book that I thought I would rate 5 stars was The 7 Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book follows aging and reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo as she tells her life story to a young journalist named Monique. Now this book for me had all the makings of a five-star read. It's queer, it's in a journalistic style. I loved Daisy Jones and the Six, also written by Taylor Jenkins Reid, so I really thought that I would absolutely love this book. And I really did absolutely love this book. It was so good, it made me cry, I really liked the characters, but I only rated it four stars. For me, it wasn't quite there as a five-star book in the same way that Daisy Jones and the Six was. I don't know if this is because I was comparing it to Daisy Jones the whole time, but I just found it to be a little bit slow. Personally, I find myself not enjoying stories that take place over a long stretch of time, and as this was detailing most of Evelyn Hugo's entire life, I found it to be a bit slow and boring. It didn't get really exciting and emotional until the very end for me. So although this wasn't five stars, I was really glad I picked this book up, and obviously giving it four stars, I did really enjoy it. So I would still count this one as a success. The next book I predicted would be five stars was The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake. Following a 12 year old girl named Sunny St. James who is navigating heart surgery, reconnecting with her birth mother, and experiencing feelings for another girl for the first time. I have read a couple other of Ashley Herring Blake's books. Her queer middle grades in particular really find a place in my heart so I didn't see why this one would be any different and for this one my prediction was correct. I ended up rating this one five stars. I absolutely love it. Sobbed so much reading this. I listened to the audiobook which was a great way to go. The narrator was a great storyteller. This story was both heartbreaking and hopeful at the same time. I loved the characters so much. Sunny was just a ray of light and I really just like how realistic Ashley Herring Blake makes her characters and their situations. She's just depicting real life in the most beautiful way and I love her so much for that and I am so glad that this book was a correct prediction and that I gave it five stars and found a new favorite. The next book I predicted would be five stars was The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is an adult contemporary romance following Tiffy and Leon who end up sharing an apartment, but the catch is that they never actually meet because Tiffy works day shifts and Leon works night shifts. I thought this book would be five stars because I have really been enjoying an adult contemporary romance recently and this had gotten a lot of five star reviews from a lot of people I trusted and I'm happy to report that I was no different. I was correct and thinking this book would be five stars, I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved Tiffy and Leon and their relationship. I liked how it built. I liked how Tiffy kind of brought Leon out of his shell and how much she cared about his family. I really liked all of the friends and extra characters in this book. I thought they all seemed well fleshed out and fun and good for the characters to have in their lives. And I don't know, it was just a fun read. I really enjoyed it. It was quick and easy and just a perfect example of things that I like to read. Let's move on to the next one. The next book I finished was The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This is a YA queer contemporary and this book follows two siblings, Violet and Sam. Sam recently attempted suicide and Violet is kind of the wild child of the family and once Sam has this incident, she is actually sent away to spend the summer with her uncle up in a coastal town of Maine and here she meets some new friends and kind of tries to reinvent herself. I predicted that this book would be five stars because it just sounded like my perfect YA contemporary. I love reading YA contemporary, especially if they are set by the sea in some kind of coastal town. I love that kind of a setting. I also love reading about sibling relationships and friend relationships. And I always have a soft spot in my heart for these wild child type characters, so I thought I would really love Violet. And I wasn't wrong, but... This one, unfortunately, was not five stars for me. I did give it four stars. I really, really loved it. I don't think it was another failed prediction. It just was missing something that would have elevated it to a five star for me. Again, I kind of had a hard time getting into this one. It was a little bit slow. Nothing much really happened until the very end, which is fine. I don't really need a really plot-heavy book, but this is just a very, very character-driven story, and there wasn't much else to keep me interested in the book. 
Despite this, I did really fall in love with all of the characters. I really loved Violet and her brother Sam, and I also really liked all the side characters and friends that she made and the love interest that she had in this book. But again, it was just missing a little something, and this was unfortunately not a five-star read for me, but it was a four. I would definitely recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. And then the final book that I thought I would give five stars to was Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in a new series by Maggie Stiefvater, and it is a spinoff of the Raven Boys series and it follows Ronan and Ronan's two brothers. As we learn in the first series, Ronan is a dreamer, which means that he can make his dreams a reality. And in this book, he meets a couple other people who also have this ability, as well as becomes aware of some people who do not like others with this ability and are out to kill them all. I predicted that I would rate this book five stars because it is a Maggie Stiefvater, and I have rated every Maggie Stiefvater I have ever read five stars. <laughs> Something about her writing style just really appeals to me. I really love her lyrical prose. I also really love that this series is set in Virginia. If you didn't know, I am from Virginia, live in Virginia. This book in particular, a lot of it happens in the Northern Virginia area, which is where I went to college and where I currently live now. And I just love having a book, especially a magical book that is set in my favorite place in the world. It just is really cool to me and it really makes me feel connected to this story. And I am happy to report that I was correct in my predictions with this one. I did rate this one five stars. Again, I don't think I could possibly rate a book about Ronan less than five stars. I just love him as a character so, so much. He is just my everything and I really enjoyed this book and I liked the different perspectives that she brought in and the new characters. I all, I thought they were all really interesting. And this one definitely ended on a cliffhanger, so I'm very excited to pick up the next books and see what happens. So I am very happy that this prediction was correct and that I also rated this book five stars. So through this experiment, I think I learned that I am pretty good at guessing what kind of books I will enjoy. Of these five books, three of them I did rate the five stars that I predicted I would rate them, and the other two were four star reads for me. So overall, this was a very successful experiment. I was not way out in left field with any of these picks. I really enjoyed every single one of them and did not find anything that I really didn't like. So now that this experiment is over, I will have to come up with a couple more books that I think I would rate five stars. If you have anything that you really enjoyed, you think I would also like, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this video. I really, really appreciate you being here. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe down below and give this video a like. I would appreciate that. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.